Richard. Hey, Richard. Good to see you here. Yeah. So Welcome. what are we up to today? We are here for Wedding Workshops Collector Expo. And nice t-shirt I see. Oh, thank you. A nice shirt that you've got on there. Uh, lovely to have you all with us. We are going to present to you today our new collectibles for 2023, which we are going to be showing at the Weta Workshop Collectible Expo. Mm. And first up, we have the Black Gate of Mordor. Look at this. Yep, this amazing piece was sculpted by Charlotte Key with assistance from Shanti Costa. And we've been wanting to make this for ages, but finally the door was opened and we got to do it. Oh. It's very, very fine, isn't it? In a beautiful way. It's actually captured the original model and the design at perfect scale. It's very spiky, yeah. yeah. Can you remember what scale we built the original at? I cannot, can you? No, I think it was 35th <laughs> scale, but uh, I'm digging deep. Well, that's, that's right, we built it at two different scales, didn't mm. we? We built the full environment, I think at 35th scale, and then we built the middle section at a very mm. large scale. I remember right. the gates being above my head. Wow. Uh, built by Mary McLaughlin and John Baster and a number yeah. of others. Yeah. Very beautiful. Yeah. And at the back, we've even got a hint of the beginning of the orc encampment as well. And, and you've got where the trolls walk yes. to operate the hinges. Yeah. And the fact that you've got the tracks in yeah. for the rotation of the yeah. doors. Yeah. And the just little, as we discussed all those little months little ago. Easterling path over oh, there. Yeah, there's the Easterling path. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I love how beautifully you've got the scale and the spikes. Mm -hmm. Very, very tricky. It is a Let's tricky have little a look piece. At it yeah. From the correct perspective. And uh, we'll put a troll behind the gate. Oh, look at that. Just magnificent. Great. Charlotte's mm. done a beautiful job on yes, this piece. She has. So I hope that uh, you'll enjoy collecting this lovely piece that we've created of a very special moment from the film. It's always great because whenever I look at the collectibles that we make, it plunges you straight back 20 plus years ago to the moments mm. that we're on uh, the miniature shoot or constructing the piece. That is so lovely. And this one is open for pre order. Yep. All, All right. right. Should we move on to some other? Should we go things? and look at these? All right. Cool. Pieces. All right, let's start off with this little little guy here, little Baradur. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Yeah, originally so. built at 166th scale. I'm sure someone will correct me <laughs> if I've got this wrong. Mary McLaughlin, John Baster, yep. and others building the original. Yeah. So I think David yeah. Tremont probably paid some part in it. But, uh, and Dave also built the larger one that course, we had. And yeah. Boal has taken the sculpture that Dave did and used that as his inspiration for doing uh, this one, Baal Sagi. And this is the same size as our Orthanc Mini, because if it was in scale, of course, it would be not yeah, big as you. This is also available pre-order, which is fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Gee, he's done a lovely job on that. Mm. Okay, and I yeah. take it that the uh, eye comes out. Yeah. Look at that. Do you like the eye of Sauron to be home or the eye of Sauron to oh, be out doing the groceries? I'm so used to it seeing it like that now. I'm kind of... Yeah, <laughs> I'm the same, but people love the eye being in it. So, uh, so we there we go. Too. There we go. Great. Beautiful. And who right. have we got here? Well, would you know, it's would Tree... You see yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. This is actually part of our Two Towers range, but, uh, you know, the Ents, they arrive when they need to. And so here he is. That is so lovely, yeah. isn't it? This was sculpted by Kim Beaton, who used John Troy Nichols files that we from our Master Collection series, and uh, and produced this magnificent little piece, which is perfect size for a shelf. I love <laughs> the way he's drawing his feet yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, gorgeous. That it's, is magnificent. It's an absolutely amazing yeah, piece. The perches where the boys sat. Yeah. Look at the foliage. Ah, oh, fantastic. Yeah. Well yeah. done, Leonard. It's, that a, it's is a fantastic wonderful. little piece. Yeah, I'm, I'm really chuffed with that little one. This is also available pre order. Right, should we leave him behind and oh, go on to oh. the next one? Uh, okay, let's pop over. All here. right. All right, here we have the Minas Tirith Fountain Guard. Oh, isn't that lovely? Who painted this one? Surasek. So, Surasek. This yeah. would have been Surasek. It was sculpted by Daniel Holland. Simon Lissaman, who's one of our concept artists, he wore some of the screen used armor for it. So yeah, that was a good day for him. That was, yeah, yeah. very exciting. So of course we've got the, the white feathers on the top in homage to Numenor, where they had a whole lot of seabirds nesting there. I like yeah, it's the a, fact that you've chosen theme for the this, day. This, this classic nice. old shirt from the Lord of the Rings exhibition at Te Papa. Oh, 
Yeah. Mikey. That's going back a bit. How old were you then when you visited? Uh, uh, younger. A little younger, yeah. <laughs> That's what, about 15 years ago or so? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, look at that. The drapery is beautiful. The chain mail. We've really managed to get our chain mail mm. down pat these days. How finely it is modelled. Yeah. I love the fact that the armour has the subtle rippling of the hand manufactured mm. approach in it. Oh man, it's amazing whenever you look at each collectible, for me it just plunges me back 20 plus years to the day that we might have been dressing this onto the actor or test fitting it in the workshop or frantically trying <laughs> to get it ready for the shoot. Yeah. Quite often things would be made in the last minutes before we were filming and this was one character that certainly fit that bill. Yeah. Oh, Leonard, magnificent. Yeah, it's an amazing piece. And of course, the fountain god was standing guard at the white tree, waiting for it to bloom. Speaking of which. And for those that are as passionate as me and Leonard, <laughs> we got completely carried away, decided to give you the white tree as well. Yeah. Look at that. It's even got the water in the back here from yeah. the pond. Oh, that is so beautiful. Now this amazing tree was sculpted by Lord of the Rings veteran Sean Bolton. That's right, Sean sculpted a lot of the fine filigree detail on the elven armour on Lord of the Rings. And when this collectible was discussed, we knew exactly the person to be sculpting this Absolutely. beautiful tree. And as the alluded earlier, the God of Minas Tirith, there we've got the white little flower. So the tree is alive. Isn't that wonderful? Now, this piece will be a limited edition, and the Fountain God on his own will be a classic edition. Great, that mm. is so beautiful. So I hope you enjoy collecting this piece. Obviously, for very passionate collectors that have a little bit more space on their mm. shelves, but it makes a perfect balance, and it takes you straight back mm. to this moment from the story and from the film. And we're not done yet. We have a whole lot of more reveals coming for the 20th anniversary of The Return of the King coming this year. Very exciting. And uh, of course, with uh, travel allowed around the world again, please come and visit us. We're one, in one of our wonderful tourism offerings and we'd love to host you and have you come and see us. And uh, obviously, to those of you that collect our different collectibles, we love sharing these pieces with you. So cheers to you all from everyone here at the Weta Workshop.